What's up, Bubble Power Axe crew? Today's video, we are going to do what is that? Hmm. That would be your upper radiator mount. That little thin piece of metal you've seen right there that's split, torn, about ready to break. We'll show you guys how to make upgraded, stronger ones. If you would like to learn how to work on your own Jeep, your own car, your own motorcycle, or even how to use particular tools, then you might just want to subscribe. Because I do Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, tour review videos, all kinds of cool stuff that may just teach you a little something. Hit that subscribe button. Now, let's talk about why that little thin sheet metal upper radiator mount, why they break. Now, see this happen mostly on Jeeps with body lifts, and there's a particular reason why. Now, I'm not saying that it can't happen to a stock rig with no body lift, because after all, that is a little thin piece of metal right there. There's not a whole lot of strength involved in that piece at all. But with body lifts, there's a little bit of a difference for those of you who never, never put one in. When the body lifts are put in, you see the puck here, here, and there's also one right underneath here. Of course, that's picking the body up off the frame to clear bigger tires. But also, whenever you're picking the body up, what's well, got to come up with it? Your fingers come up with it, obviously, because they're attached. What also comes up with it? Your core support, which your grill, your core support, whatever. But what's attached to your core support is also your radiator. The radiator can't move. The radiator does not come up with the core support. So you have to do a little bit of modification to how it's attached. And I can show you better on rust bucket. Now you can see here on rust bucket, here's the bottom of the core support grill, whatever you want to call it. It's lifted up. Here's the space. Somebody made some jack leg spacers right here to go to the bottom of this. And right there, you can see the lift puck for the core support. But what you should also be noticing, here is your radiator right here. Notice what's going on right here. You got this flat piece of bar stock that joins to the core support here that comes down and attaches to the bottom of the radiator because your radiator cannot move. Even though your core support's lifted because of the body lift, your radiator cannot move. Why is that? It's because when you're running your fan shroud, you can't lift the radiator because then it throws your fan shroud out of the center of your fan because then the fan will eat at the bottom of your shroud. So the radiator has to stay in place. The way body lift companies do that is they produce these little long brackets right here. All it is is bar stock, holes drilled into it. If you've got a two inch body lift, center to center here will be two inches. This is a three inch body lift, so you got center to center here is three inches before the bolt, bolts come through. This one's just a hole. This one here's a stud that's welded to this right here that comes through. The different manufacturers make these brackets in different ways. This right here, hole up top, has a stud comes through right here because there's no bolt head back here, so that's a stud welded to this coming through you put your nut on for your radiator now this is a three inch kit because of the spacing here let me show you something on the 91. now this particular kit the brackets they included with this and again i did not put this body lift in this short bracket here from here to here is one inch so if you had a one inch body lift there you go you got your one inch bracket from the center line to this one to center line to there is a two inch so if you had two inch body lift there just use that bracket but if you have a three inch you use this one and this one you go from center line to here center line to there and you got three inches so it sounds like it works right and it does but here's the drawback to that all this added leverage of longer bracketry and stuff like that has to be stressed has to be bolted to this thin little stamp sheet of metal right here well, as I showed you guys a moment ago in the intro, this little thing right here is so thin. What happens is the movement and vibration of the radiator is, is kind of, uh, laws of leverage says, it's amplified. Because it's from here to here now versus it was short up to here. The radiator vibrating going down the road eventually stre uh, stress cracks this right here. And they break. How do I know this? Guess what? It broke. So what you see right there costed me a radiator because when it broke loose, the radiator shifted back and got into the fan and just cut a big gouge right through the radiator. And so I zip tied, stuck another radiator in, I was stuck on the side of the road, zip tied that baby up there and it's been holding for a while now. Why? Because I'm using black zip ties. Here's a tool tip for you. Whenever you use zip ties, get the black ones. Not red, not white, 
use the black ones. The black ones are made out of a different type of plastic. They're much stronger, they last a lot longer, and they're less uh, subject to any kind of uh, heat, ultraviolet rays, like that. It doesn't affect them nowhere near as bad. So if you've got to use zip ties, get the black ones. They last a lot longer. So what we're going to be doing today is making another bracket to bolt here to go down to my radiator to get rid of all these uh, zip ties. And the material we're going to be using is one inch by eighth inch thick, just flat stock. You can see right here, I better focus. This is a 72 inch long piece, now 72 inches from this point all the way down here. So I, I, can, I buy the long length so I can cut off what I need. But as you can see right here, eighth inch thick, one inch by 72 inches. Okay, it's one inch wide, eighth inch thick, this way. And as you can see, it's quite a bit thicker than this stamped little sheet of metal right here. This will last you for a while. Do what? What? Did I hear somebody ask, hey Chuck, I don't have a second Jeep to get my measurements from. So where do I get my measurements? How do I do it? That is a very good question. Take your tape measure, drop it down inside here, and you see where the hole is to where your bolt holes went through. Hang your tape just inside the bolt hole right there. See right there. Well, the tape is hung inside that okay bring the tape measure up lean it against your radiator support or your core support or grill whatever it is you want to call it i've got about four and one eighth of an inch from the surface of the core support here down to the center line of where the hole goes through for the radiator add about one inch plus that inch from five and an eighth once you get that dimension established from the surface of the core support down to the center line of the radiator then you add in the dimension from here to there because this is where it bolts on here comes steps outward from the core support to support your radiator and that dimension would be two and one eighth of an inch now let's go over our dimensions top surface of the core support you come down to the center line of the hole you got four and one eighth of an inch add an inch to that gives you the extra material you need to put your bolt hole through actually we're going to use um, rib nuts in this case to give us some threaded insert makes it super easy I'll show you that here in a bit but then we got to add the other two and eighth of an inch to come back to bolt to the top of the core support so what do we got seven and a quarter inches of material we're going to cut off on this one inch strip boss boss the plane the plane boss the plane to do yourself a favor and make it a little easier on yourself. If you're using metal that's been sitting outside or has developed a lot of surface rust, take you a flap wheel and grind off the surface rust before you cut it because it's a lot easier to hold a long piece of metal than it is a shorter piece of metal and risk hurting yourself. So before I cut this section off, I'm gonna take my little flap wheel and clean off the rust. Then I can paint it and make it all pretty when I'm done. Now, if you feel froggy, you can lay your bracket down right there. Mark the center line of your first hole. Right here is going to be your first bend. If I clamped it down, it wouldn't move, but you got the point. Yeah, I kept it in line. So, that's going to be my first bend right there. Then, at that point, this is going to be the surface of the course port. We'll come back that five and an eighth inch from there. And that's where I'll mark our, hole, mark our line to cut. And before I cut this piece off, I went ahead and drilled my holes. Why? Because it's easier to hold a big piece of metal than it is a small one. So as long as it's attached and it's stretching out throughout my Jeep, back all the way back that way and the tires got held over there, it's easier to drill it. And I chose a 3 8 drill bit because rib nuts fits that just perfect. So when I clamp that right there down, I can use a quarter 20 bolt to lock it in place. But I'm not going to put that in place until after I make my bends or being singular. So now that I got my holes drilled, got all my metal nice and cleaned up, because I've got plenty of metal to hold on to at the moment, I can go ahead and cut this off. There's the cutter head I've used. It's one of those Lennox bits. I got this from um, Lowe's, I think it was. But I'll put a link down below in the description so you guys pick one up. Just put them on any of your little right angle die grinders, the right angle grinders. They are absolutely awesome. Love them. And they're much safer than your abrasive bits too because they don't tend to explode on you. So now I'm going to switch back over to my uh, flap wheel and clean up all that crap right there so it don't cut me. And 
and there you go. Now why am I showing this all rigged up in my receiver hitch of my Jeep? It's because I'm showing you guys another way to bend metal that this thing has more purposes other than pulling your trailer around. I understand that some people don't have a press brake. I understand some people don't have a finger brake. Or I even understand some people don't even have a simple ben uh, a bench vise to bend metal with. But if your truck, car, Jeep, whatever you have has a receiver hitch, check this out. Regular C-clamp. The only reason I've got this stuck in there is because my C-clamp has one of those adjustable sections right here and it's locked up and it don't slide no more. So I had to make up the space because this was this uh, screw right here was bottoming out. This was bottoming out into the threads down here before it was reaching up here. So I just put this in here for a spacer. So if you can take this foot all the way down on your metal, but eh, this is what I'm going to improvise for the moment. So, now that I got it all set up like it, just test it. It's so simple. Now, one thing you want to be careful of, if you don't have this straight, I mean, we're talking perpendicular to the walls of the receiver, if you guys sit there crooked and you bend it, it's going to fold this tab left or right. So when you feed this up inside there, and before you clamp it down, I take it, if you notice how I've got it over here on the side, this radius right here inside the receiver hitch, I've got the edge of this metal running along parallel with that radius up inside the receiver, because that tells me then that this metal is square up inside there before I clamp it down. So when I bend it, it's going to be a good 90 right here. It's not going to be all okay catty us off to the side. Y'all want a little fun fact? My dad hates that hammer right there. He and I used to do houseboats a lot. Houseboats, I would rip the decks off the uh, catwalks and up on the uh, sun decks and re-deck them, put new plywood down, turn on re-fiberglass and re uh, put new gel coat stuff down. This particular hammer is made like an east wing, but it's not an east wing. So whenever I get the uh, the 16 pin nails and I get a good pattern, get a good run going, I'm you know, bam, 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 next nail, bam, 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 and keep them going. But I got a certain speed and certain pattern going, this hammer will start singing. It'll start doing a high pitched ring and just and as I go through it, every time I hear ding, ding, I mean, it's just a constant ring like that. And my dad started huffing and puffing. He said, boy, boy, I hate that hammer. I hate that hammer. And I just go a little bit faster. People with, when we're on the houseboats, when he and uh, when he and I would get on those boats and start, you know, we're doing restoration jobs on houseboats and stuff. Some of the people would think we're fighting, but actually we're just up there just giving each other a hard time, having a good time. So all boils down to, I mean, that fiberglass work ain't the easiest stuff in the world to do. So you got to make a good, like any other job. You razz each other, give each other a hard time just to make the day go by and just have a little fun. Now, there's a bracket. Ain't that just pretty? Look at that. Let's go see how it fits. Now I'm just gonna eyeball it real quick, see how it fits. And I'm gonna drop it in here like this. It's gonna sit on that surface and this. Nailed it, baby. Sweet. Okay, so now, I mentioned a little while ago that we're going to be using the rib nuts. This is where we're going to use it. So I'm going to take that rib nut, put it in here, um, close it up to give us a 3 d insert inside here. So let's go back over to the, my little work surface on rust bucket. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, I'm going to put a quarter 20 insert. Let me show you. I've got a video on how to use this thing, which I'll, I'll link it up so you guys can check it out. But right there inside that, it's got a, tw a quarter 20 thread right there. Flip around this way. See right there? Best what you do is you screw it on the end of your die here. And remember this bracket here, it sits on the core support like this. Your radiator comes in right here, bolts on this side of the bracket here. So what we want is our rib nut to go in through this way. Go in goes in that way right there. Oh, see? This flat piece sticking back here, the rib nut coming through this way. So at this point, what we're gonna do is, try to hold this in place, I'll use my leg for the other side. 
and I, it's like a it's just like doing a rivet gun you squeeze these two right here together let me come back a little bit so you guys can put my, I'll put the other side against my leg right here Got a little bit going there, so I've got it kind of closed in. I take and clamp it in. Now, don't do it like a rivet and try to think, okay, I'm going to do it to something pops because then you done broke your die. At this point, done, release it, and screw it off the die. Or, also, if you want to do it the right way, just turn that and it falls right off. Now, as you see right there, you got your threaded insert ready to rock. Now, at this point, this part is done. But viewfinder's upside down, it's confusing me. Now that this part right here is done, I'm gonna give me a little bit of spray paint and make her look all purty before I put it on. Here's a cool tip for all you uh, red Jeep fans. International Harvester Red, tractor supply paint. It's a pretty darn close match. International Harvester, baby. All right, I'm gonna put that bracket. Now, as you can see for the bottom mount, it's a pretty straight up and simple. It's just nothing but simple flat stock right here. So you just measure your center line here to here. In this case, whether it's a three inch body lift, your whole center lines will be three inches from here to the center line of that one. That's pretty straight up and simple. If you can fabricate the top mount with that 90 degree bend and make the holes just like that, this right here will be a walk in the park for you. So you'll have one here and you got one right there. Those are simple, simple flat stock, make you some holes, proper center lines, three inches here for, for a three inch body lift, two inch would be two inch, one inch would be one inch. If you got no body lift, both strike to the course port, you're good to go. And there you go, all installed, looking, well, kind of pretty. If I just waited until my paint cured, it'd have been a lot better, but patience is not my best virtue at all. I hate waiting for paint to dry. So, looks like I should make one for that side over there to clean up that yucky looking mess. Couldn't do it. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, hit me with that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Or leave me some cool comments down below. Now, I showed you guys a little receiver hitch trick about how to bend the metal. I've got a brake press back there, and I've got a finger brake, and I've got several other different methods I could have bent that with. It probably made it much more prettier and I, I, probably easier because I can just put it in there and just bend the press and be done with it. I've been the brake. I realize not everyone's going to have a uh, sh some form of sheet metal, sheet metal or metal bending tool. I realize that. So I want to show you guys a neat little nifty trick just using the receiver hitch of your car, Jeep, whatever, car, Jeep, uh, truck, whatever you may have. And you can use other pieces of square tubing. Just look for anything you're gonna have, you can be able to create a 90 degree bend coming down off of improvise that's all you got to do don't overthink it cool all right everyone hope that little uh, tip there helped you out if so thumbs up subscribe leave some cool comments down below appreciate you hanging out peace out there you go